All that aside, because one key element of a syllogism is that it has major terms, minor terms, and middle terms. The major terms have to do with the subject, and the minor terms is what you're trying to establish about the subject, and the middle term is what connects them. Socrates is a man, all men are mortal, therefore Socrates is moral. The man, the men thing, is the middle term that connects Socrates and mortal. When you have this structure, you have the universe and existence, or cause for its existence, and what you have as the middle term is begins to exist. And so you have everything that begins to exist as a cause, the universe began to exist, therefore the universe has cause. It's, it's an undeniably valid syllogism. So why am I saying the Kalam is dead? What's the end of the Kalam? Well, it should have been dead from the beginning as an argument for the existence of God. Because what is also undeniable about the Kalam is that it never mentions God. Not the word and not the concept, though some people would like to weasel that concept in. The conclusion of the Kalam, Kalam is that the universe must have had a cause for its existence. Now, I'm not necessarily convinced of the soundness of the early premises, but let's grant that. Let's just say that, yep, if something begins to exist, it has a cause, and the universe began to exist, therefore the universe had a cause. What do we know about the cause of the universe? Assuming that the cause exists, what do we know about it? I don't know. I don't have any way to investigate it. Oh, well, we can definitely know that the universe isn't the cause of itself. Well, I'm not convinced that we can definitely know that um, because causality is necessarily temporal and temporal causality breaks down at t equals zero, which would be the origin of the universe. But also we're sloppy with language because if the universe, if everything that is in our local presentation of the universe existed as essentially a singularity and it expanded, then what you're talking about is not the cause of the universe, but the cause of the expansion of the universe. And I don't know what would or could cause that. And I don't know if anybody else does either. And yet they will argue on behalf of a God. Okay, so a lot of things here, Josh, where do you want to take this? Well, I think the first thing is just really to say, I'm sorry, I have something in my mouth because my throat's been absolutely dead recently. It's absolutely killing me. So I had to keep, I had to just eat a lozenge to kind of like yeah. soothe my throat a bit. I apologize for that. But essentially, I think that what Matt is perhaps trying to do is to just kind of say the clam is not dead in its sense to reach the conclusion, but rather the conclusion just doesn't reach God. I think it perhaps is quite right when he says that, and I don't think it's much of a problem. But just that what he's doing is identifying the first stage of the Kalam cosmological argument and the second stage of the Kalam cosmological argument. The idea that the universe has to have a cause and that the fact that the cause is God. There's two stages here, and that's something that I think Zach knows a bit more about than I do. So, Zach, do you want to continue about that? Yeah, I mean, typically when you're looking at people like Craig and such, when they're making the Kalam, they're not just saying the universe begins to exist um so it has a cause and then we're done like that's not how like that's not how craig argues that's not how most people argue people then try to identify like this cause of the universe is god arguing things like the cause maybe might be like need to be like timeless or initially like changeless or something like that so there's two stages of the argument and most theists i'm pretty sure will go from saying there's a cause of the universe to trying to defend that it's god because you know if you start without the column or start with the column you have a lot more like weight towards the theistic hypothesis i think and then you can try to identify that like it's God that caused the universe. So I think that's really helpful to understand like the two different stages. Like the Kalam is just the first stage. And then from the second stage, you're trying to identify it as God. And there's things like if you use like a scientific argument and you get like space time beginning to exist, we're getting closer to God. Like you're running out of options of um, what could be like the cause of the universe if space time begins to exist because it can't be like space time. Um, so that's what all I want to say is like it's broken into two different stages. And the first stage with like the first three parts of the clum like that's just the argument the universe begins to exist so there must be like a first cause and from there we're going to try to connect that first cause with god i definitely agree and i think that that kind of distinction is very very helpful because i think what matt might be doing is just to kind of skipping past or like kind of overseeing this latter stage which i think is so important a part of apologetics and and it would be i, I would agree with matt if someone came out and said well we got to this cause of the universe and well now we've suddenly proved the christian god which is one of his criticisms that he raised later but well that's normally not what people do and as a result when we have to look at the clam cosmological arguments we have to look at it from a purely or like the holistic kind of approach that apologists normally use alongside the clam it's not just one kind of one screw fits all it's like you have to really look at it in a more holistic manner yeah i think that's right that's good stuff